So our next question is, it is, is it going to be totally dark during the full totality? Um, so short answer is yes, it is. Um, and that's if we do get at least a sunny day. If it's like <laughs> what we're seeing today, it's going to go from bright blue skies to darkness in a mm. matter of minutes. It's going to be a really cool phenomenon. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to rewind this a little bit. So if it is a day like today where, you know, sunny blue skies, it will appear nice and bright um, right around, I'd say, 156. Mm -hmm. But as soon as it is a max eclipse, you're going to see those uh, skies turn to blue to completely dark uh, as we at least go throughout. So here it is for you. Once it is totally 100% eclipse, mm -hmm. yeah, it will get a, a little bit darker and eventually that will turn into the eclipse moving on and the eclipse ends right at 426. So I bet yeah. a lot of folks will be confused too. Just like the animals are, <laughs> the animals will be confused. Oh, yeah. I'm, I was just thinking if I see the sun, okay, it's getting dark, it's getting dark. All right, it's time for bed. Oh, it's 313 in the afternoon. I still have half of my day and the sun <laughs> exactly. is back. So I bet a lot of us are going to be very what just happened? What's is it <laughs> is it time to like go to bed? Especially after having daylight saving time yesterday. Oh man, yeah. we're just all kinds of confused right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, it is uh, definitely going to be a, a interesting sight. I'd mm -hmm. say to see you be. I mean, the street lights may even come on. <laughs> street lights. You may hear crickets. You yeah. may hear um, some of the like raccoons and nocturnal animals come mm -hmm. out as well. Owls. Um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Yes. Yes, it is. Very interesting indeed, and remember that moment of totality only lasts a few minutes in your location. Well, as you've heard over the past 30 minutes, this total solar eclipse is a big deal. People from all across the globe are flocking to Northwest Ohio for a glimpse of what to see. Ryan Lusheen shows us how local businesses are getting ready. The last time anyone saw a total eclipse was in 1979, 45 years ago. It's truly something you can only see once or twice in a lifetime. And businesses here in Toledo are looking to capitalize on the opportunity. With all the, the hype that's going on, we hope that all the local small businesses are able to benefit from it. Take businesses like Printed on a Lark, for example. They've started making t-shirts to sell to the tourists who want to remember that day. We're coming up with this design. We started thinking about it uh, back in January. We know it's a big thing coming to Toledo. We know there's a lot of people coming to see the eclipse and uh, everybody wants to leave with something with, uh, you know, from the event that's going on. There's a precedent for people making big money during these kinds of events. During the last total solar eclipse, also known as the Great American Eclipse of 2017, small towns saw huge financial benefits. Hopkinsville, Kentucky, a city with a population a little over 30,000 hosted tourists from 46 states and 19 nations. And sub businesses in town, like the Imagination Station, not only want to help commemorate the eclipse, they want to help people experience it by inviting the public to their property for a front row seat of the view. They're starting to buy tickets for that day already. Just getting that excitement generated um, in the city has really been fun to see everybody find, you know, just getting there. They're, they're just getting excited. You know, in the science world, this is a Super Bowl of science. So the eclipse is a great opportunity for us to educate the community of what's happening. And it, it truly is a once in a lifetime experience. Well, the city of Toledo has been preparing for the influx of tourists for months. Mario Dunham explains how some of the other big successful events are setting the stage. As the eclipse approaches on April 8th, sky gazers are coming to Northwest Ohio to witness the celestial spectacle. I talked to the director of communications and marketing for the city of Toledo to see how the city is gearing up for an uptick in city tourism. Well, we're preparing um, to be able to handle however many folks decide to come to Toledo, and we sure hope that uh, we sure hope that it's a lot. The city has plans in place for the eclipses people visit Toledo. Rachel Hart shares why the city is prepared and what measures are in place to ensure its safety and operation for this historic event. Planning for April 8th is a lot like planning for any other large influx of people into uh, downtown. So. We are preparing for this the same way that we would prepare for the fireworks, the same way that we prepared for the Solheim Cup. Um, what that will look like is our public safety forces really making sure that the downtown area is prepared to handle that influx of people, um, closing down roads if necessary. The city expects people to visit Toledo, but it's on the edge of the eclipse site. 
Hart says that the city doesn't expect the population to double, but the city expects people to visit Toledo due to its convenient location. We, we don't anticipate that our population is going to double. We are on the edge of that line of totality. So while we are a convenient place for folks to stop, I think that um, we don't anticipate having quite the surge of population that maybe some of those um, counties that are closer to that line of totality are going to see. While preparation is key for a smooth operation, Hart shares her excitement for an influx of people who might visit Toledo. Um, Imagination Station will be hosting the Mud Hens, um, the Metro Parks. Um, we're really excited about an opportunity for that influx of visitors that might not otherwise have come to Toledo. And the city's going to make sure that downtown's ready to go and putting its best foot forward. Well, if you're looking to get out and enjoy the view, all while taking in some of the best outdoor areas Northwest Ohio has to offer, Metro Parks Toledo could be a good spot. Meteorologist Kaylee Bowers takes us there. We have to come the experts here at the Metro Parks. Amanda's joined with me. Tell me a little bit more about what the Metro Parks are doing to prepare for this April 8th eclipse. Yeah, so, um, 18 of our 19 Metro Parks are in the path of totality. So for people that are looking for a place to go view, your Metro Parks is an excellent spot. Secor is the only one where you won't be able to see the entire thing. Um, so don't go for that one. But uh, Metro Parks is hosting viewing parties at several of our Metro Parks for the eclipse. The largest one with the most activities will be right here downtown at Glass City Metro Park. We'll have telescopes, uh, family friendly kids activities. Uh, we'll be handing out um, eclipse glasses for people to use to, to view the eclipse. Um, and just have a lot of naturalists on hand to explain what's going on, answer questions, have a really great time for that event. We'll also have viewing parties at Oak Openings Preserve Metro Park at Heavy Wheel House. And then we have um, a partnership viewing program at Wildwood Preserve Metro Park where the Lords University Apold uh, Planetarium staff are coming out to provide information um, and answer questions for visitors at that location. Well, the total solar eclipse is going to go down as one of the most memorable experiences in Northwest Ohio for years to come. But looking directly at the sun, even during an eclipse, could do some serious damage to your eyes. Meteorologist Matt Willoughby breaks down what doctors recommend when it comes to proper eye protection. A good pair of glasses here that should work. Solar eclipse glasses are essential for viewing this year's once-in-a-lifetime event. While it's a fantastic opportunity to observe one of the most dramatic astronomical events you can witness from Earth, it's important that one does so safely. The reason it's real important to go to an accredited site and is that unfortunately unscrupulous vendors have been selling eclipse glasses or labeled as eclipse glasses with ISO labeling that have not been certified or vetted. The proper glasses used during an eclipse should appear to be a pitch black while wearing them. If you see through them, they may be a faulty pair. Glasses we would use to view an eclipse are several thousand times darker or stronger than your regular sunglasses. So you don't want to wear regular sunglasses or even several pairs of regular sunglasses aren't going to do what an ISO certified eclipse glasses or viewer will do. Getting the best look at the solar eclipse is a dream for many across the country. So sticking with the preferred pair is the safest choice. You also don't want to look at an eclipse or view an eclipse through a lens like a binocular or a camera with eclipse glasses even on. Uh, to do that, photographers use special filters on the outside of a lens when they're photographing or viewing uh, through binoculars or cameras or things like that. Our next step was testing to see if any glasses were ISO certified and to see if any weren't to use. Look specifically at the filters. So you want to make sure that there's no space between the filter and the side or the frame itself. You want to make sure there's no scratches and no perforations. And then when you put them on, you should have a comfortable view of the sun and what you're looking at. If it feels bright, uh, if it looks blurry or uncomfortable, uh, stop viewing and don't use those glasses. Get another pair. Well, from the end of the world to a sign from the gods, eclipses have a history of sparking conversations, rumors, and myths. All right, so next question that we did get, uh, I was wondering if you could give us a start to end time for the full eclipse in Putnam County, and that's from Sharon. Uh, thank you, uh, Sharon, for that question. We do have a uh, list for you um, as we uh, kind of look at this 
from start to finish, uh, start to finish, max eclipse, uh, total mentality, and uh, time in totality. So we do have uh, Putnam County, we do have Ottawa on here. So that'll be starting up right around 310 uh, p.m. Uh, and then eventually max eclipse will be right around uh, 312 and eventually totality will end right around 313 uh, of a total time of three minutes and 27 seconds. And the big place to be, I've heard a lot of people say they're going down to Forest, Ohio, which will be seeing them almost four minutes in that path of totality. You can see about three minutes and 56 seconds. So these are just a couple of places mm -hmm. that we do have listed and we have the entire list on our website. And in fact, one uh, gentleman, I believe, said, um, when's the eclipse site eclipse start? Um, in a certain part in, in Rising Sun, Ohio. Again, we have all these lists on our website as well. So if we don't mention your town today, you can go to our website or also you can continue asking more questions and we can get more specific next week as well. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? When was the last time we had a full eclipse? Ooh, it's, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can pull that up for you. I think we, we have a graphic say, somewhere. Yes. Uh, let's see if we can pull that up for you uh, shortly. Yeah, we definitely do have that for you. So the exact date in 2017, it was August. No, yeah, it was in August. So we did see that one in 2017. But that wasn't so, here in Ohio. Yep, got the graphic for you right here, actually. So that last time uh, we did see that last eclipse was in 1806 in Ohio. In Ohio, yes. Yes. And the next one will be in 2099. So you may, may have to do a little bit of time traveling uh, uh, as well. So we do have a little bit some more dates as well. Um, so, or at least more cities that will be in that uh, totality in time. You know, we got two minutes and six seconds for mommy. This is throughout the Toledo Metro. Uh, in some of those times, most areas in throughout the Toledo Metro will see anywhere near two minutes or right under three minutes. And uh, some, of, some of those more cities that we just showed, um, the max one being Forest, Ohio, Finley at three minutes and 44 seconds. Very interesting there. Well, throughout history, there have been many explanations, superstitions, all about eclipses. Meteorologist John Birchfield takes a look back in time. We're going to talk a little bit more about the history as opposed to the science, how different cultures explain the eclipse, in particular delving into the history, the mythology, and the folklore surrounding the total solar eclipse, and sort of break down how each culture appropriated the eclipse and tried to explain the science before the scientific understanding was really developed and we really reached that modern level of science. So let's break down some of the information here on the history and the mythology surrounding the total solar eclipse and history by out there may find some of this information very, very interesting. Now, throughout human history, the prediction of eclipses has been something that is very common. And in fact, many ancient societies, even BC era, were still doing a pretty good job of predicting the eclipse. Essentially, they observed that it occurred in regular intervals and they divided the amount of time between eclipses and extrapolated that information to say, hey, if it happened this long ago, here's what we can expect in the future. So prediction was actually fairly accurate given the lack of scientific understanding, but the cause is something that was still unknown and remained unknown until relatively modern history. Now, each society had a very different explanation for the cause of the eclipse, so let's delve into some of the first recorded observation of the total solar eclipse dating well back before Christ 2159 BC all the way to 1948 BC. Those were some of the earliest references in mythology. In particular, Chinese astronomers mentioned the total solar eclipse well into the BC era. They did attempt to predict the eclipse with some degree of accuracy, but of course some of those primitive very early eclipse predictions not quite as accurate as they became over the years. Now starting in 772 BC, the Chinese cultures actually recorded the eclipses in writing on animal bone and some of those still survive today. So you can actually look back at those records and see some of the observations that were occurring at that time. Now predicting the eclipse was a 
goal of many early cultures, including the Babylonians, which also predicted the eclipse as early as 750 BC. So the Chinese were first, but the Babylonians had a little bit more success in predicting the eclipse, and they actually used a formula, and that was based on the observations of when those eclipses occurred. Essentially what they did is they added 18 years and 11 and three quarters days, and they determined, hey, that is when the next total solar eclipse is going to occur. And generally speaking, that formula actually fared pretty well. Now, of course, it took many generations of observations with these eclipses being spaced out by so many years. So a lot of this was written history that was passed on from generation to generation of scientists. And then they employed that formula to extrapolate and predict to the future. Now, on the other side of the ocean, there were predictions being made as well. In Mexico and Central America, the Mayans were among the first to mention the total solar eclipse. And not only did they mention it, but they recorded it in books. Only around four of those have survived the test of time, and that is because of Spanish conquistadors that burned many of those books due to the superstitious connotations with the eclipse. Not only did the Mayans observe the eclipse, but they also created a number of different theories, many of which involved superstition and religion surrounding why the eclipse was occurring. Meteorologist John Birchfield diving deep into that one. I certainly hope you learned something new. Well, experiencing the total solar eclipse is something you're going to remember, but you may want to snap a photo of it so you could cherish the moment. But before you do that, meteorologist Kaylee Bowers shows us some important things to know so you don't ruin your phone or your camera taking those pictures on your camera. Very important. So of course we came to the experts here at Cone Camera. With me we have Preston. Preston, thanks for having us. And just talk a little bit about like having to protect your camera. What are some things you need to do? Yeah, so it's really important to protect your camera during the eclipse because there's a lot of light coming from the sun and it could really damage your camera. Uh, for the sake of example, I did this the other day where we had a roll of film and this is what happened after five seconds of exposure to the sun very quick. Imagine this is your camera. Not good. We don't want that to happen. So it's really important that you use specifically solar filters. These filters are designed specifically for photographing the sun and they are different than neutral density filters that most photographers are used to in that these are about twice as dark. They're extremely dark and not only do they filter out a lot of light, but they're also filtering out UV light and in some cases ultraviolet light too. Um, this is probably the most important step you can take when you're protecting your camera um, and also you want to protect your eyes as well with the fancy glasses. So I'm going to be using this and these filters when I'm photographing the eclipse. Well, keep in mind, you probably won't get a photo that will match anything like the professionals from NASA. So you may just want to take the moment and enjoy it and maybe take a few selfies and capture the faces around instead of looking directly up at that. Stay with us straight ahead. It is billed as a once in a lifetime event, but you may think I've seen an eclipse before. What's different about totality? What's our next question? All right, let's see. Uh, so <laughs> So what about uh, Sylvania? From what I've seen, it uh, doesn't look like we are in the path of totality. So poor Sylvania. Should we let's show Sylvania. Break it down for them. And we can Sylvania. zoom in even more on this. So Sylvania, you will see some sort of the eclipse. Will it be in totality? Not necessarily, but you are just missing that by, I mean. It's just like even, Bedford Township. Yeah. You're going to be right on the line, but you're not going to. You're not going to see that. So the best bet would go down towards Ottawa Hills, go towards UT's campus, mm -hmm. Lilo Metro. Um, but if you're west of Sylvania, over towards, is that Berkeley? Berkeley, Berkeley yeah. um, Metamora, Metamora, Assumption. All of these areas west over towards the Ohio, Indiana, Michigan border, you're not going to be in it. So Sylvania, sorry. Sorry. Just, just go right down the highway. Yeah, go right short, down I promise a short drive um, down to Anywhere, mm -hmm. Toledo Metro, Perrysburg, you know, Oregon. Yeah. And you will be right in that um, path Just of totality. Go right down 23. Right down 23. Yep. So next thing we're looking at, again, it's the path of the totality. Mm -hmm. And we kind of show this graphic a lot. Again, it goes from Mexico into parts of Texas, Oklahoma. I mean, let's just kind of play and show you. It goes along the Mississippi River, along the Ohio River, eventually into parts of the Great Lakes. 
and I mean, a good portion of Ohio seeing it from Cincinnati, yes. Dayton, close to Fort Wayne, but Fort Wayne isn't in it. Part of Franklin County, the Columbus area will see it. Cleveland. Cleveland, Erie, Pennsylvania. If you have friends in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. they're not going to see it. So uh, Ohio's going to be a big place for yeah. a lot of folks to come in four weeks. Yeah, sure is. I mean, and we even got the Lake Erie Islands in this. I know mm -hmm. that's always a big destination. It starts to be a big destination mm -hmm. during the summer months. So Lake Erie Islands, you are definitely in that. So yeah. I think that'd be pretty insane to see that from Putin Bay. <laughs> I bet a lot of folks will be going to Putin Bay, going yeah. to Catawba, going, oh, I can't try going to a lakeside. I mean, there's mm. so many different places along the lake. I know a lot of campgrounds are opening up yes. uh, for this eclipse. I know quite a few places will be gearing up and getting ready for an earlier season than what they normally see for their season. Yep. All right. But yeah, so that is uh, pretty much one thing we do want to remind you of, or at least throughout the Toledo Metro, of course, we're going to see that eclipse. But one thing we do want to remind you of is never look directly mm -hmm. at the sun. That's one of the biggest things we're going to stress with this solar eclipse is make sure you have that protective layer um, for you as we go closer to this solar eclipse. And just make sure you can find those glasses at a bunch of mm -hmm. uh, areas, whether you want to drive to some areas, just make sure that it's ISO certified. I'm going to read this off one more time. It is ISO-12312-2, uh, and that is the certification you want to look for uh, for those certified I ISO uh, glasses. So, yeah, do make sure you do protect those eyes mm -hmm. as we head closer to the solar eclipse. That's a big thing. Yep. Yes, the eye, eye protection is one of the most paramount uh, things that you need to be prepared for on April 8th. So if you've lived in Northwest Ohio or Southeast Michigan your whole life, You've experienced an eclipse before, but never one like this. Meteorologist Ryan Weekman shows us why it will be unlike anything that we've ever seen here at home before. For six minutes and 14 seconds today, Wasion was the center of the galaxy. Eclipse chasers came here from California, Mansfield, Cleveland, and as far away as New Mexico. Yep, just taking a little bite out of the sun around. WTOL 11 was there on May 10th, 1994, when an annular eclipse moved directly across the country. The peak was in our backyard, with Wasion hosting scientists and astronomy buffs from across the country to record the historic event. Other partial eclipse passings happened in 1984, 79, 70, but were far less significant locally than the 1994 annular eclipse. Well worth it, well worth it. Yeah, everybody here I think enjoyed it and had a lot of fun. At its darkest in Toledo, the sun was 89% blocked by the moon. The shadow passed early in the afternoon and air temperature readings dropped by several degrees. Some even reported a noticeable chill feeling in the air. Do you think you remember the 94 eclipse? Well, if your memory's a bit foggy, keep this in mind. There were no other eclipse events that happened in our area between 1994 and the most recent partial eclipse in 2017. April 8th is the date to keep in mind this time around. For those of you who remember the 2017 or 1994 eclipse, this is going to be different, totally different. The 1994 annular eclipse differs from April's total eclipse in that although the moon does go directly in front of the sun, it's too far away to cover up the entire surface of the sun. The eclipse this time around will be complete darkness. The moon will block out 100% of the sunlight. How about we give you more perspective this April to get the same 89% effect that was experienced back in 1994. You would need to move far away from the path of totality, which passes locally and you can see on the red line here. In fact, you'd have to move all the way to Milwaukee, a 230 mile jump. This is truly a once in a lifetime event and something you've never seen before or will see again around here. Reporting in studio, I'm meteorologist Ryan Weekman. Ryan, appreciate that update, and we certainly hope over the past 60 minutes we have gotten your excitement to a whole new level, and also we've taught you a few things about what to expect with the upcoming total solar eclipse. It is going to be occurring coming up here very soon on April 8th. Be sure you have the proper eye protection ready to go, and if you're seeking more information, you could always visit WTOL.com slash solar eclipse and check out our WTOL 11 YouTube page, a full library and resource information that is going to get you prepared for this once in a lifetime event. We are so proud of what we've been able to provide so far and we encourage you to tune in 
to WTOL 11 all day on April 8th as our coverage will continue for the whole staff here at WTOL 11. Chief Meteorologist Chris Vickers wishing you a happy eclipse.